Oh, I forgot. I'm sharing this. <laughs> Jim, I'm waiting. Gloria is in the driver's seat. <laughs> That's pretty bad there. I'm going to go ahead and share the PowerPoint here. Oh, Lord. Jim's looking at me like, uh, Gloria. Oh. So we're going to start our presentation with a story. And this is a story about a first generation student whose name is Jose. And he's eager to go into nursing. And he comes from a rural, economically disadvantaged high school where he performed well in advanced level honors English, math, and science courses. And after being admitted into the local university, Jose receives counseling on, on which courses he needs to take. Um, and because he's from a high school that, um, a high school he came from, because of the high school that he came from, Jose's advisors believe it would be best for him to take developmental math, English courses, and English courses before continuing um, in college level coursework. Although these courses feel easy to him, uh, repeating much of the content he's already covered in high school, Jose gets the impression that his instructors give him an unusual amount of attention and support. They regularly tell him on, uh, they, they really regularly keep up to him, come, tell him to keep up with the good work and that he's, he's well on his way to starting his real college journey. As Jose continues, or he comes to the realization um, that it's a mismatch between where he thought he was and where the university seems to think he is, he starts to question his ability to pursue a nursing degree. And one of the things that I'd like to ask you is what, what would we, um, what could we have, what could have been done differently for Jose as he came in to the university? What do you think could have possibly been done differently for Jose? And you can feel free to say something. Gloria. Oh. Yes. Yeah. This is this is Maxine. You know, as I think of Jose and you know where he came, where the assumption there were some assumptions here, and I think what we could have done differently is um, we often talk about meeting the student where they're at, and sometimes that requires us to step into. Um, the K through 12 environment as faculty. And so if this student, I'm just going to use an example, if this student was at the Yakima Nation Tribal School, um, I think that I would have maybe, if the student had an interest, I would have gone there. Um, and so we meet the student where they're at to get an understanding of um, how they might step into the institution. Um, moving forward. So it's just a thought that I have and um, thanks. I just wanted to share. Thank you, Maxine. Anyone uh, else? Gloria, this is Vicki. Um, okay. My first thought was talk about the situation with him so that he gets to choose. Um, so, you know, just kind of walking him through the requirements of the program where his how his background was in high school um, and in a way that then it becomes his idea 
that if if he did or did not need the remedial courses. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Hey, Gloria, this is Claudette. Um, I was thinking the same thing, like maybe the best place to start is an interview and asking him about his experience and where does he think he is? Um, you know, not just looking at him on paper, but actually what are his thoughts on how those classes went for him? Um, and did he really need the remedial courses? And Thank we've you. gotten one uh, response in the chat box. Mary, you were talking about placement testing? Right, this scenario doesn't say anything about placement testing. Um, so um, that would be something to investigate. The other thing that um, uh, Lauren will do in the English department here is students can prevent, uh, present to them a portfolio of their high school writing uh, to, for him to take a look at. So, so in this scenario too, one might, he's taken honors. Let's see, see what kind of assignments and what was he doing. Thank you. Okay, so I there's another comment, Jim. Yeah, um, Karita says when she was an undergrad, or Karita, do you wanna to speak to this a little bit? Yeah, um, when I was an undergraduate, I came to Heritage, by the way, I did play take a placement test and they put me at, they gave me the option. They said, we think you might be able to do the college level course, but we also think that you, you could benefit from starting at the developmental course. Anyways, they gave me the option and it was, it was kind of nice that I felt like um, it, it was nice just to have a say in that decision. Ultimately, I was afraid. And so I decided to start at dev, developmental math um, and it went really well. I realized then that I could have just started in college level but at least I was the one who decided that. So that was helpful, I thought. Yes. Okay, we're gonna keep moving. And I'm just gonna, I just have a few more slides and just want you to think as we, as you look at these slides, I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions. What are behaviors that would empower? What did you say, Gloria? I said, what are behaviors that would empower Jose? And I'm just, just these are just things to reflect on. I don't think you guys can, I don't know if you can see, it says overcome barriers that limit access. What behaviors show, what behaviors will show that we are committed to assisting him to overcome barriers that limit access? I guess uh, information is power. So just being very straightforward, I don't know what his interests are, but about what the requirements are and the level of mastery that's necessary to be successful in the different fields that he might be interested in. That's awesome. Similarly, Claudette says in chat to give students voice. So again, this issue of agency, student agency, voice and, and choice as well when, when necessary are, are coming up today. Awesome. What behaviors will show that we are committed to assisting him to overcome barriers that limit access? Mm -hmm. What behaviors will sh that we are committed to 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 limit um, to committed to assisting him to overcome barriers that limit access? How will we cultivate? leadership in Jose, no matter how hard it might seem. In our University 101, we do have the students um, work in groups and present some of the material in every unit. So, 
So early on, I think we're trying to um, work with, uh, provide students the opportunities to be the leaders of the discussion. Okay. What does our commitment to promotion look like? What tools? What is the definition of promotion there? Promotion, promotion, moving someone forward. How are we going to promote, how are we going to help someone to move forward? What tools are we going to give? Okay. That's what I mean by promotion. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Gloria, are you, um, are you interested in responses from us as you're asking the, posing those uh, 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 provocative thoughts? <laughs> well, I, you know, it, it, it's fine if people respond. I, I wasn't sure that people would, but I am interested, yes. I think it requires an examination. We look to the student, but I think it requires an, an examination. We want the students to discover in this, on this education journey, but I think it requires us to investigate or examine ourselves as um, instructors, professors, um, in their education journey and how do we walk with compassion and um, oh, other elements of that um, to um, co-facilitate educational success, I guess. So I think we really have to examine ourselves in this journey as well when they're going through that. Most definitely. And just to add on that, I think we have to celebrate their, all their successes, uh, even the little ones with them, because, you know, from my experience, you just see their self-confidence continue to grow as you do that. Thank you, Vicki. How does it look to navigate? Respectfully. with empathy, and understanding. Connecting with his culture, and how does that look? This is amazing diagram. Right, <clears throat> because culture is not just language and food and, and songs, it, it goes deeper. I'm gonna stop the share now. We want to we want to move further on, and we just want to give you all the opportunity to. Um, Jim, you want to share this part? Well, sure. So we've had discussions in the past about cultural responsiveness at the teaching and learning level. Um, so we've and and in assessment as well, but we've kept it largely anchored to the classroom experience. And in trying to think about broadening the horizon of cultural responsiveness, we recognize that an institution like a university is comprised of many component parts. And we thought we might be able to scratch the surface today by digging into just a handful of these parts to see, um, to, to really create a conversation about what we at Heritage are doing that's culturally responsive in different units, in different departments, and what might, which behaviors might we adopt in order to enhance our cultural responsiveness. And we have intentionally steered clear of giving a concrete 
definition of what cultural responsiveness is. Gloria, do you want to speak a little bit to that, why we've chosen not to so far give a definition of cultural responsiveness? Instead, these, as, as um, Maxine noted, some provocative images and words. Right. So one of the things in, throughout the slides, what I was doing is I combined the, we combined the, that was verbiage from our, our, our mission as well as, um, yes, it was totally verbiage from our mission and as well as a, a, um, a definition of culturally responsiveness that I came up with. And we, our goal is to just have you all spend time. You, you had those thoughts come to your head and we'll put those, we'll put you, we're gonna put you in breakout groups to be able to talk about what types of behaviors, what are the behaviors that come when we think of um, culturally responsiveness and when we think of even our mission. So we're gonna line those two things up together and give you a couple of questions to be able to talk about and then come back and just share. I think- And now the units that we're going to be looking at today are admissions, academic advising, the ASC and SILT. So you're going to be, and it's in that order as well. So you're going to be assigned randomly to a breakout room um, to look at our mission, to look at a definition of cultural responsiveness created by Gloria herself. And we're going to just have you navigate to the web page for each one of these units and answer a couple questions um, that are on this document that I'm going to share with the group right now in the chat box and then we'll come back together and um report out re re share out our findings so let me see i'm putting it in here to everyone one more time here and now so you'll see on this, on this document, you'll see um, the heritage mission and a definition of cultural responsiveness, along with four basic breakout room questions. Now, the discussion you've already been having is going to mean that you may not get to all of these questions, and that is completely okay. Maybe um, uh, spend as much time as you like on each. And if other topics come up, please feel free to um, diverge. Um, but you see four, break, four questions, and then on the bottom is the assignment for each of these breakout rooms. So if you're in room one, you'll look at admissions, two, advising, three, the ASC, and room four, we'll look at SILT. Um, so let me see. I'm going to go ahead and re-break out. Uh, for, first of all, are there any questions about that? Okay. If there are just... a uh, send out a chat, but right now I'm creating, I'm assigning automatically four breakout rooms and I'm gonna open them up to you now, guys. Okay. Busy. <laughs> he must be doing something else. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so what we're looking at is room four only has three people in it, but that is that's okay. We can. Who's in there? Who's um, in room four? Claudette, Gloria Garcia, and Richard. So they should be. That should. Oh, be okay. that's a good room. Yeah, you you put me in that room. It looks like. And I put and I put you in that room. Um, just because it just assigned everybody, so you obviously right. It was did, random. Right? not choosing to go. Room one, so people talking about admissions are Charo, Corey, Heidi, I don't know Heidi. I don't either. Pelletier, uh, Ray, know. Terry Joe, and Yusuf. And then- Oh, they're in that room? 
what's that? They're all in admissions. They're all in admissions. And then, oh yeah. So those three are the only ones who are looking at us, who are looking at Silt. Who? Then uh, Claudette, Gloria, and Richard are looking at Silt. Oh, well, that's probably a good group right there to look at Silt. Then Davidson, Ed, Jocelyn. Is that your student, Jocelyn? Yeah. And um, Julie. Oh, there's Aaron. Aaron left too. Yeah. Did Aaron join it? Aaron joined room two. Oh, okay. Um, and Laura are in room three. And Aaron, David, Felisa, Carita, Mary James, and Maxine. How come there's so looking- few in room four? That's interesting, huh? I could have used one more person besides me. I don't want to be in our group that silt, but I, I can, I'll go in there. Are you going to walk around or should we give it, we'll give it a little bit of time. How much time do you think? I feel like the, I felt like the first part of it went well. <laughs> yeah. They just didn't know what you wanted them to do in terms of the. Um... Let me know when everyone has come in. Is that it, Jim? No, we still have a couple more. Two rooms are are coming are coming back now. Latinx writers are they versed on African American writers? Are they versed on- back in the main room, Gloria? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say, oh, we were having a good a good conversation. Yeah, awesome. Um, so we're really really excited to hear about your conversation in the before we left out of the the main room there were there were a couple of things that you all talked about um when it came to um behaviors that relate to culturally responsiveness and you brought up things such as student agency um meeting students where they are and looking at their background, paying attention to their culture and their background. So we're excited to hear what it is that you, um, what behaviors you found in these different areas that we could, that we're already doing um, and that we could enhance. Okay. So who, who was in the admissions group and what would you say to, uh, to summarize what you spoke about? I guess oh. I'll, I'll jump in here. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> um, we uh, had a chance to review the website uh, for admissions and um, thought that overall it does a pretty good job at um, being culturally responsive um, to um, a wide range of students and perspective, um, people that might wanna engage with the university. Um, it does skew younger, um, so that might be um, uh, not as uh, attractive to a more non-traditional student, um, but we were pleased to see that overall um, it, it does a nice job. Um, and then in addition, we kind of jumped into a little bit and had some conversation about um, uh, the the uh, initiative of having um, admissions uh, representatives being from the communities in which we're trying to recruit from uh, and that uh, that's a good initiative and that we feel that that's a culturally responsive move, um, but recognizing that there are still some holes there that need to be filled for us to be truly representative. But overall, we were pleased. And that's about as far as we got in our conversation. And I, I'd like to add a little bit to that. Thanks, Heidi, for summing it up for us. Um, I've had conversations with our admissions team and one thing that I've really seen them do really well is to point out to potential students that uh, there's a lot of good schools out there, but they need to choose the one that's really compatible with uh, their, um, you know, what their expectations are in, in terms of having a social support system and what type of uh, uh, culture the university has. Um, so I think the, the admissions team has done a good job of pointing that out, that uh, Heritage University is compatible with their um, cultural mindset. Um, I, I did want to point out also that 
there's a lot of students. I also did want, I also wanted to point out that cultural responsiveness is not mutually exclusive to um, uh, promoting a challenging environment. So, so, so it's, it's, there's a lot of students who are attracted to a place that's culturally responsive and it's also challenging. So let's not assume that, that uh, we have to downplay the fact that they would have to keep up with high standards of, of performance in that, in, that, uh, in that place. What do you mean by that, Charles? I'm trying to understand, I, I'm not understanding that last comment that you made, culturally responsive. And you so, said, and, and you were saying, and challenging, or I'm I, I, th I think our, our initial uh, conversation before the breakout rooms was emphasizing empathy, and, and that's important, but we also want to point out that if you're going to college, uh, uh, you need to be ready to keep up with a, a competitive situation where you would have to learn new skills and, and really step up your game type of thing. So, so empathy does not necessarily mean downplaying the fact that they're getting them they're getting themselves into a challenging environment once they go to college. Most definitely, because that's not that's not culturally responsive. Making it not dumb, dumbing it down is not culturally responsiveness. That's and, what you're saying. And, and right? Terry Joe, who's yes, and Terry Joe, who's a, a student, shared that with us. That that message appeals to her that she's going to be challenged when she uh, uh, joins our programs. Awesome. Thank you. Anyone else? How about the ASC? The Academic Skills Center. Who was a part of that group? Julie? Um, I can talk about it a little. Um, we found that there, there was a lot to admire about what was already on the website for ASC um, in their discussion, particularly in their mission, um, where they they really talk about how students bring a wealth of their own experience and um, building bridges between you know students in various cultures and expectations. So uh, the language there is very much in line with um, cultural responsiveness. Um, we also had a student in our group who has had experience with navigating the system and felt like everyone at Heritage is incredibly nice and willing to um, give you the information you need. But she also felt, well, I should let, I should let her say what she thought. Yes. Jocelyn, do you want to share? Yeah. Um, as a coming student throughout this whole pandemic happening, um, I started out of curiosity going on to the website. Um, throughout the time that I've spent on the website, I was familiar. I became familiar with a lot of that, a lot that Heritage offers. So, as I mentioned before to my group, I clicked on every line and what it was for: admissions, financial aid, resources, scholarships, programs, requirements. Um, so I spent a lot of time navigating the website before I actually even um, turned in my application myself to become a student. So I personally find the website very helpful, but again, it was my interest. So I invested that time into looking, but as you come in to just look at the website and other students and um, people that are not familiar, it may seem a little bit hard just because you don't know where to go. And during this time, physically, I've not been into the school. So it was just basically out of asking here, asking there, emailing people. And that's the only way that I've been able to get around through through school dur during this time. But I personally enjoy it. Uh, we talked about the bridge program, how beneficial, how beneficial it was to me. And I was able to bridge my math and my English. But nobody told me about it. It was a student and then asking here and asking there signing up there was a deadline that I didn't know about and I got like a day before the deadline during the summer time so it, it was just perfect timing um financial aid is very helpful Jocelyn, every time I eat you also said you were um it was troublesome because there was no way to submit the bridge paperwork online um no I I found it very well that was not me I think it was the oh. other I was another student in the in the group I found it very helpful. 
go, go ahead. The English paperwork can be submitted online. Okay. okay. For Bridge. What about Jocelyn, the folks who were? Is, oh. I, I'm sorry, Jim. I, I no, just wanted no. to probe uh, Jocelyn just a little more. I appreciate her forthcomingness and her uh, her broad uh, um, discussion of what she did. And it sounds like she really was dedicated to going through the website to find out everything she needed. But Jocelyn, are you were you hoping that somebody would kind of reach back out to you more? more quickly to kind of help you navigate? Is that what I'm getting, that you kind of had to do it on your own and you felt a little bit on your own as a result? Um, yes, uh, but I think the circumstances of the whole COVID and the school shutting down, I totally understood. And like I said, it was my interest into enrolling into the school. So um, I did my research, but I would have liked a little bit faster response. I would have liked to actually have come into the school um, and throughout the reflection that we're all talking about, um, we are going to face some challenges and I'm not aware of what's going to come, but I think as a coming into a university, I'm expected high standards. So I think the challenge is, is already there. Thank you. Yeah. We talked a little bit too about how the ASC fits into that bigger admissions picture and placement picture. It's not just getting a placement score or looking at uh, a transcript. It's helping students do a self-assessment of okay, what of the math concepts, the math domains that are gonna be coming up in the college level course am I familiar with and comfortable with? How might tutoring factor into that and help me along with that? Or do I need to go with the bridge and how can that help and how flexible is that? and somebody to help us talk through that as a student um, would be helpful and, and give us some of that agency and some of that decision-making ability. What about the folks who are in the uh, academic advising group? Are you reporting for us, Mary? About Maxine reporting for us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we um, as we opened up the advising um, portion of the uh, what we were tasked to do. Um, I think um, you know we were looking at the questions, cultural responsiveness um, of the web page, and. Um, um, please interject any that any of you folks that were on that within this group, but um, it was very uh, challenging and more. I think the direction of that page was uh, for the advisor rather than the student. And when we opened up the links within that, um, it. Uh, it wasn't very responsive. <laughs> um, the, um, uh, I think Mary was pulling out uh, the eagle picture that was responsive maybe, or <laughs> I mean. Uh, um, the photograph of Ed and the student. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whereas if you look at, um, even just a, at, a, at a glance, if you look at the admissions section, you will see those photos. I mean, I mean not that that, is the only thing that defines culturally responsiveness, but but that immediately tells you the diversity of the, the student uh, demographic that we have here. Whereas when you go into the academic advising, um, you know, it doesn't seem to, um, I'm trying to find the, the good of, there's goodness in there, but I'm, I'm having a difficult time with that um, in the context of, is this link really being culturally responsive to the student? And um, I think we're a little deficient in that area. Um, and does it fulfill the heritage mission? Uh, it's hard, to, it, you know, from my lens, it doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to um, have a, it doesn't fit that. Um, 
And uh, so um, I'm gonna leave it at that and let others uh, chime in as well. We, we did talk about, um, someone else mentioned the mission uh, being on the page. Um, we talked about the idea you could add mission, you could switch, it's in third person right now, you could switch to a, a you focus so it feels as if it's talking directly to the, the student if a student is, because uh, it is a public facing, so so we probably need a voice that's it's the I thou approach maybe, right? Where did that come from? That was my freshman year of college. <laughs> Uh, I think I, I think the advising page um, has gotten slightly out of the student space and more into the employee space. It wants to provide um, tools and tactics for the advisors rather than for the students. And so it's probably just, you know, things drift over time occasionally. The people get an idea and they just help and the whole page or department or organization can drift a little bit. And it appears that's what's happened on this page. It's just drifted a little bit to being functional for advisors rather than factual and inclusive to students. And so we should probably just take a hard look at all of our pages, frankly, make sure we haven't drifted off mission. But in this case, in particular, to make sure we give it a hard look and make sure we're drifting toward students rather than toward employees. Uh, the, other, the other piece too is, um, uh, you know, this is a section that, um, you know, that does the advising, but for me as faculty in, a, in nursing or business or wherever, um, I, these forms are not even familiar to me. And, and so how can we thread, you know, uh, make that connection um, uh, of documents that maybe are used in um, the advising, the office of advising and um, you know, make that, um, you know, so there's continuity of, of, of uh, practice. I love that phrase. And what about the group that was looking at SILT? I know we only have a couple minutes left, so I'm sorry to keep pushing along so hard. I'll go ahead. Um, one of the things that we uh, discovered was there's a lot, a lot on that web page that we didn't know about. Um, so we had a good time <laughs> exploring um, and thought maybe a little bit more um, explicit language around cultural responsiveness could be added. Absolutely. Uh, the truth is we haven't done anything to the page, that page. We've been working on the help desk, but we haven't done anything to that page for since, um, who was that wonderful woman that helped us with the web page? At least five years, we haven't had time to, to really focus on that page. So that was pretty kind actually, Claudette. <laughs> Erin says that uh, her name was Cheryl. Okay. Oh, um, Cheryl. Yes, Cheryl. Okay. So we, I, I'm interested. Cheryl. Okay, Cheryl. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was interested in how we might end this discussion. And I thought one place to go, because we're just barely opening a door here, right? This is the first time we've all come together to look at cultural responsiveness as an institution, at least, you know, um, uh, in, in, in this manner, what kind of a call to action do you think, based on the discussions that we've had today, that we might adopt in order to keep us going toward this goal of achieving our mission? So one, and it could be um, small, small actions or large ones. Like one was one that David just said, which is like take a take a hard look at all of our our web pages and check for this possible drifting that we might have seen, um, and and find ways to sort of enhance our our web interface. What other kinds of calls to action do you think we might adopt 
in order to, to enhance our cultural responsiveness as an institution. Uh, Jim, I think uh, just the thought that I had is, I mean, we've opened up the dialogue and if, if we, could do, we could execute one thing, it would be within these four domains that we talked about here, at least um, when somebody opens the page to admissions, say, have that, um, the, what uh, Gloria, uh, culturally responsive practice, or some message that just um, uh, tells the viewer, if I'm a student, I see this immediately and think, oh, wow, you know, um, that, that is a, I mean, they feel that that's important. They're telling me this. And so if we could do or have this message, um, just like we have when we open the main web page of COVID response, you know, you can click on that, you know. Um, well, I think we need to do something along those lines with, um, if this is truly the aim of, of um, uh, the, the, the strategic plan and the content within our vision and mission, we really need to elevate that and have that as a message immediately when um, we open those links. For students and faculty, it's a reminder for me as well, you know. Jim, I think one of the one of the first things we could do as a takeaway is is maybe have Silt help with some of the department heads that are responsible for those main landing pages within the departments, especially some like myself on the non academic side, help make changes to that front landing page to make it more culturally responsive. Good, David. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I think it needs to be much more, uh, this is going to sound funny, but much more subtle and intentional all at the same time. I think that the, the page owners need to, once again, analyze those pages and maybe with some help from Silt to help guide the thinking on this. But um, to make sure that the pages are welcoming, representative, and inclusive of all those who are going to visit. So they feel like, I have a home here, right? And that's images, it's statements, it's everything. It's the writing, it's the first person versus third person. It's all those things. It's um, so people feel like, hey, this place seems like it's for me, no matter who I am. And um, I think rather than being super, um, um, statement oriented, I telling them why they're, this is a place for them through some sort of a statement, I think it's more so demonstrating it and how we write it, who we showcase, all the elements that are there. So people, they, they feel it much more, um, what's the right word? Um, I don't know, it, 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 it just, it represents them without te us telling them that we're representing them. You know what I mean? I don't want it to be so overt. I want it to be much more subliminal than that. So that they, when they read everything, they say that was written for me, whether I'm black or white or native or Hispanic or gay or straight. I just want them to have a feeling that that is written to be approachable by me. And it's a really hard thing. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not the guy <laughs> to get it right. But I think that's where we could use Silt's guidance to help us really understand how to get to those points of inclusiveness. Um, I like to, this is Jocelyn, um, something to add to David's um, statement about making that school be for, I'm speaking in my behalf. Um, I think how I knew that that school was for me is because there is a statement on there. I don't recall exactly where I found it, but I know I read it. And it talks about how heritage wants you to be successful regardless of the color of skin. And not only that, your culture, black, white, however, but I think it's the financial um, statement that it says that you guys are gonna make it affordable and helpful for anybody to join, to um, be successful in this school is when that paragraph is spoke to me personally, it said, no matter if you have income, rich, poor, financial aid or not, we can help you. 
So that is why and when I actually did my application. So there is a statement, I don't recall where, but um, David, it is there. And that is what made it my school. Nice, thank you. So maybe it was the mission. Were you gonna say something, Mary? Well, mission and vision. Uh, I was going to say that back when, when, when we shifted to the, in quotation marks, new website, which is like 2011, 2012, um, uh, David's staff was also very helpful. So I think we have a content, but Silt's not an expert on those subtle, if we know what those subtle things we want. The, the web page design. Um, so I think we need, we need a team with everybody adding the talents that they have and, and like the, the feedback to Silt that Claudette uh, presented so gracefully, you know, and, but then we're gonna need the, that whole team. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you, Mary. What a great way to end this discussion. It is a team effort. That's what this conversation was about to get us to all thinking about how we as a university in every single area, what we're doing and what we can enhance. I um, want to thank you all. It is after one o'clock and want to uh, uh, honor our, our time, but thank you all so much. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.